know my name. Let's go! Onslaught Origin Explored Charles Xavier, the man who created the X-Men, has always worked on the path of creating a world where mutants and humans would live in peace and harmony. No matter the odds, he had always kept his mind straight to this point. Charles and his team had opposed both mutants like Magneto and Sadus humans from waging war against each other. This leaves us with the question, didn't he ever feel frustrated about it? As there has been more than many times where humans like Bolivar Trask tried eradicating mutants, and mutants like Magneto tried erasing humans from Earth. At some point, Charles Xavier's frustration took a form known as Onslaught, and in today's video, we will be unfolding the story behind it. So without further delay, let's dive into the origins of Onslaught. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Onslaught The Unrevealed Created by Mark Wade and Andy Kubert, Onslaught was a sentient psionic being that resulted from the consciousness of Magneto and Charles Xavier. At some point during a battle between Magneto's acolytes and the X-Men, Magneto brutally ripped off Wolverine's adamantium from his exoskeleton. The damage was so intense that Wolverine's healing factor had trouble healing him. This triggered Charles to the point that he used his telepathic powers to shut down Magneto's mind, rendering him in a catatonic state. While doing this, Magneto's grief, anger, frustration, and lust for power entered Charles Xavier's mind and blended with the long-suppressed depression in his mind. This finally resulted in creating an alternate personality in the professor's mind known as Onslaught. The entity remained dormant for quite some time while Charles endured his several failed attempts to rehabilitate Sabretooth and the growing hatred against mutants in society. Finally, Charles reached his breaking point when a young mutant was killed near the grounds of Xavier Institute for Higher Learning, and Onslaught was freed. Juggernaut mentioned the existence of Onslaught in Uncanny X-Men issue 322. Going by the story from the issue of New Jersey, Beast, Psylocke, and Bishop encountered an object streak falling from the sky and crash landing. Upon investigating further, they discovered that the object was an unconscious Juggernaut. Once Juggernaut gained consciousness, he completely freaked out. He began ransacking the place and attacking the two X-Men. Bishop absorbed energy from the city's electric grid and redirected it to Juggernaut several times, finally getting him back to his senses. A weary Juggernaut's mind revealed to Psylocke the last thing he remembered, which was his arrival in Canada, intending to warn the X-Men about a new threat known as Onslaught, and it was the same entity who had punched him flying across the country. Following this, the story of Onslaught was further expanded to X-Men Volume 1, Issue 15, released on March 21, 1996. In this issue, Nemesis, aka Holocaust, was contacted by mutant Sebastian to help him capture the X-Force in exchange for new armor. However, while they discussed it, the shadowy figure of Onslaught appeared and attacked Sebastian and his colleague Lady Tessa. After taking them down, Onslaught enhanced Holocaust's powers exponentially and asked him to capture his old nemesis, Nate Grey. Onslaught intended to make Nate Grey one of his allies. However, it was later revealed that when Holocaust tried capturing Nate, the latter defeated him and even broke his armor. The story continued further in X-Men Volume 2, Issue 53, where we finally got to see a full version of the character targeting Jean Grey to join his cause. The story began with Jean Grey shopping in Salem Center. Although the regular people around her tried behaving normally, Jean could very well hear their xenophobic thoughts. She realizes that being a telepath is not that easy, as one constantly has to compare the words of regular ordinary people with their actual thoughts in mind. She, however, ignored all of it and entered the trial room. As Jean began trying her selected clothing, she was transported to the astral plane by Onslaught. Being clueless, she asked Onslaught about his identity, to which he replied that he was a sympathizer for the mutants. He confronted Jean about the duplicity of humans and stated that the professor's dreams about creating a utopian world with mutants and humans is a fallacy as no matter what his efforts were, the hatred for mutants amongst humans would only keep growing till the point either of them perishes. Onslaught took Jean Grey to Graydon's Creed's campaign headquarters to further establish his point. Graydon was the mutant child of mysterious and Sabretooth, and he grew up believing that his mutant parents abandoned him. 
Therefore, he hated mutants to the core of his heart. According to Jean, it was pointless for Onslaught to showcase what humans feel about mutants in secret in a place where campaigns are being run against them. However, that was not what Onslaught wanted to show. Upon reading the minds of Graydon and his officials, a level of mutant hatred and duplicity amongst was observed. Although Graydon's standpoint was based on anti-mutant policies, his officials despised him for being a mutant. Jean, not yet falling into Onslaught's trap, stated that every individual has their own secret and it never mattered to her till she is surrounded by her trusted friends and mentors. The scene briefly shifts to Juggernaut emerging from the shadows in a place inhabited by Archangel and Psylocke. It seemed that he wanted to alert them about some danger but could not recall anything. This was about his previous encounter with Onslaught, who had him blocked from accessing his memories from the encounter. Unable to find answers, he rushed his way towards the professor's mansion. Meanwhile, Onslaught, in response to Jean's assurance of trust in her friends, took her to the X-Mansion. Onslaught was aware of Jean's trust of the professor, and so took her into his mind. He showcased the professor's memories and his different encounters with Jean in the past. He then revealed the professor's romantic feelings for Jean, something that he had been suppressing for years. All this made Jean perplexed, and Onslaught, feeling that he had made his point, asked her to be his ally. He stated that with their powers combined, they would be unstoppable, but Jean kept her stand and refused to join hands with Onslaught. Infuriated, Onslaught threw her back to the dressing room from where she was abducted into the astral plane. She looked at the mirror to see Onslaught being telepathically etched on her forehead. After failing to get Nate beside him, it seemed that he targeted Jean, but she disagreed as well leaving us with the question of who was next. Onslaught meets the X-Men. Failing to convince Jean Grey, Onslaught sought to get the X-Men to join his cause. This was showcased in the one-shot comic series titled Onslaught X-Men. Written by Scott Labdell and Mark Wade, the series was published on June 5, 1996. It continued from the point when Jean Grey returned back from the astral plane. The story begins with the distressed and frustrated Charles Xavier. Holding a picture of him and Eric, he recalls the good old days when they were friends. Over the years, things have really changed for him, and he believed that he had lost his friend because of the harsh world that they had been living in. A harsh world which had always discriminated against the mutants and despised them. Tossing the picture into the flames, Charles telepathically summoned all of the members of the X-Men. Soon, Wolverine, Cannonball, Iceman, Cyclops, Beast, Gambit, Storm, and Bishop arrived. Upon being asked why the sudden call, Charles began explaining his thoughts about the present scenario of the world. Jean Grey had already encountered Onslaught, and unbeknownst to the psionic villain, she even knew that the villain was none other than Charles himself. She did not reveal it to the rest of the team and kept shielding her thoughts from Charles as well. Charles continued explaining his beliefs about how time and again, humanity has been causing harm to mutants all over the world. He sounded more like Magneto than Charles himself, and everyone was prepared perplexed at his words. Suddenly, Cyclops and Jean noticed the Crimson Gen of Ciderock on the professor's table. The Crimson Gen of Ciderock was the source of Juggernaut's power, and with that on the table, it could be inferred that Juggernaut was no more. Jean screamed, altering everyone, but it was too late. Soon the room was filled with psionic energy, and no one could hear Jean anymore. Jean tried bringing back the professor's consciousness, but Onslaught had completely taken over his body. Disabling the psionic energy, Onslaught began stating how he could take down each and every member of the X-Men, giving everyone a glimpse of what he could do. Onslaught left Charles Xavier's body, warning everyone that the next time he arrived, he would expect a few of the X-Men to realize his cause and join him. After Onslaught left, the team went to the professor's ready room, which had a lot of valuable information capable of causing catastrophic damage if Onslaught laid his hands on it. Accessing the files on Charles's computer, they learned that Charles had been going through the details of Franklin Richards, the son of Reed Richards and Sue. Meanwhile, Onslaught created a childlike psionic projection named Charles and met Franklin. The psionic projection, only visible to Franklin, asked him if he ever felt scared about people harming him or his parents. However, Franklin was perplexed by his words and wondered if the child wanted milk. He offered milk to him, which the psionic entity lost his calm and threw the glass of milk on the floor. Franklin's mother, Sue, asked him why he threw the glass, and Franklin stated that it wasn't him but Charles. But since the psionic child was invisible, none believed him. Meanwhile, accessing Charles's database, the X-Men were again attacked by Onslaught, and this time, after a long battle, Bishop managed to save them. 
The scene then shifts to the Sentinel space somewhere within the unexpecting heart of America, where two scientists are shown to be discussing the Sentinel robots. As they did, one of the Sentinels had its eyes glowing red and the name Onslaught projected on its screen. Meanwhile, the X-Men teamed up with the Avengers and the X-Men to plan their next move against Onslaught. It was soon revealed that Onslaught wanted to capture Nate Gray and Franklin Richards to warp the entire reality. The team of superheroes split in half, with one going to Magneto and checking if he had any link to the psionic supervillain, and the other going to warn the Fantastic Four. Nate Gray was left in the protection of X-Force. However, Mr. Sinister had his own moves in action and wanted to capture Nate Gray for himself. He attacked the X-Force and managed to take Nate a prisoner. Onslaught possessed Hulk and targeted Cable, but the former was defeated by Storm. He then escaped, and after possessing Charles's body, he met the Fantastic Four. He stated the necessity of letting young Franklin join his school of gifted youngsters, but Reed denied it. Soon the Avengers and the X-Men arrived, and Onslaught revealed his complete form and took Franklin by force. Next, Onslaught launched his army of Sentinels that he had previously controlled, cutting down all exit points from the city. He also manipulated Franklin's mutant abilities and created a massive citadel in Central Park. With the addition of Franklin's power, Onslaught grew stronger, but after a combined attack from the Avengers, Fantastic Four, and X-Men, his armor was destroyed. From within, Charles could be seen, and Thor pulled him out of it. This, however, further helped Onslaught as he was then free of Charles. Onslaught's Sentinels caused caused a rampage, and many more superheroes joined the fight. Everyone gathered for a final battle in New York, while Onslaught managed to get access to Nate Gray as well. Charles Xavier also arrived at the battle and helped Nate and Franklin escape from Onslaught's astral realm. Meanwhile, Onslaught used Franklin's power to create a second sun, drawing it closer to Earth in order to wipe out all life on it. Phoenix turned off Bruce's persona from the Hulk, and the latter went into an unstoppable rage. Hulk hit Onslaught so hard that his armor shattered completely, releasing a force of psionic backlash that separated Hulk and Banner. However, the Onslaught crisis was far from over, as he was now in a purely psionic form which could spread all over the universe. Reed Richards stated that the only way to defeat Onslaught was to contain its energy in a non-mutant body and then destroy it. Soon Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, Thing, Human Torch, Captain America, Iron Man, Giant Man, Wasp, Scarlet Witch, Black Panther, Namor, The Falcon, Hawkeye, Bruce Banner, and Doctor Doom entered Onslaught's energy form, and the X-Men destroyed the entity with a massive explosion. The explosion seemed to kill all of the heroes in it, while Charles managed to retrieve Nate Gray and Franklin Richards from the astral plane. However, it would be later revealed that the ones dying in the explosion were not really dead. During the explosion, Franklin had subconsciously created a pocket dimension where they all were placed and reborn into their new lives similar to their past lives. Marvelous Story Arc Onslaught on Counter-Earth After completing 10 years on the Onslaught event, Marvel released the comic series Onslaught Reborn. Created by Jeff Loeb and Rob Liefeld, this was a five-issue miniseries released from 2006 to 2008. After the events of M-Day, in which Scarlet Witch used her powers to depower Earth's mutants, it unintentionally caused Charles Xavier and Magneto's powers to collide. This resulted in the rebirth of Onslaught. Being enraged, the psychic entity swore to exact revenge on the superheroes he despised. He began taking control of the Human Torch and Reed Richards and trying to kill Franklin Richards. Fortunately, Invisible Woman and Thing arrived and managed to help Franklin. He ran into Counter-Earth but was also followed by Onslaught. Arriving on Counter-Earth, Onslaught's size grew humongous and obtained his full form. He first faced off against the Avengers, and after a long fight, he fell into the ocean and was presumed dead. On Counter-Earth, Reed and Sue did not marry and hence had no children, for which everyone was curious about Franklin's identity. Meanwhile, Onslaught returned and possessed the Hulk and made him attack Thor. He then switched bodies and attacked the Hulk. Onslaught wanted to know which of them was stronger. However, when he possessed Thor, Mjolnir dropped from his hand as he was no longer worthy. Following this, Onslaught once again possessed Hulk's body and made him punch Thor so hard that the latter flew high into the atmosphere. Onslaught, possessing the Hulk, tried lifting Mjolnir, and that was when the Avengers and the Fantastic 
Thor arrived. On Captain America's orders, Human Torch and Iron Man rescued Thor and took him back into Baxter Building. The rest continued battling the possessed Hulk. While Captain America was thrown into a building, Iron Man charged down at Hulk from high up in the atmosphere at full speed. He delivered a powerful punch and knocked out Hulk. But after that, Onslaught possessed Iron Man and made him attack Captain America. Meanwhile, at the Avengers Mansion, where Ricky Barnes was babysitting Franklin, Loki, Executioner, Scarlet Witch, and Ultron V offered their help. They were soon opposed by Ant-Man and Invisible Woman, who were present there all the time. Invisible Woman did not want to make any alliance with the villains, but after the brief fight, they agreed to join their forces to get rid of the massive global threat of Onslaught. After a long ensuing fight with Onslaught, Ricky Barnes, aka the Bucky of Counter-Earth, defeated Onslaught using a Fantastic car and sending them both through the negative zone barrier in Mr. Fantastic's lab. Following this, Franklin returned to his home while Onslaught was trapped in the negative zone. Ricky Barnes mysteriously arrived on Earth-616. Red Onslaught, when Red Skull merged his mind with the Professor's evil consciousness. In the crossover event known as AVX, Charles Xavier died, after which Red Skull dug out his corpse and grafted a part of Charles's brain into his to obtain the Professor's psychic abilities. During the Axis event, Red Skull had turned Genosha into a mutant concentration camp where they were exterminated. When Magneto learned about it, he lost his calm. He took matters into his own hands and murdered Red Skull by shattering his skull with bricks. This awakened the Professor's onslaught consciousness, and together with Red Skull, Red Onslaught was born. The combined efforts of the Scarlet Witch and Doctor Doom defeated the monstrous villain. Possessing Ricky Barnes A four-issue miniseries was released in 2011 titled Onslaught Unleashed, in which Onslaught possessed Ricky Barnes. After remaining trapped in the negative zone, Onslaught noticed a small tear in reality via which he could return back to the primary dimension. However, he lacked the strength required to pass through it, and he possessed Ricky Barnes. He wiped out all her memory after she was sent to the negative zone. He transported her through the hole in the negative zone to some other in Philadelphia on Earth. Eventually, Ricky began having nightmares about a powerful entity attacking her in Columbia and all of her friends dead. She addressed it to Steve Rogers, too, which he promised to look into. However, one night El Toro of the Young Allies was kidnapped by El Dragon following which everyone began taking Ricky's nightmares seriously. Soon the Secret Avengers and the Young Allies, following Ricky's nightmares, set off to investigate the Roxxon facility. Once they reached the facility, Onslaught revealed himself, attempting to use the stored energy in her to pull himself out of the negative zone. The fight soon began, and eventually, Ricky made gravity kill her in order to seal off Onslaught's chances to return and begin his unstoppable rampage. Following this, Steve Rogers began having similar nightmares to Ricky, suggesting that enough of Ricky's and Onslaught's energy still existed, and they were finding a new way to return to Earth. Monstrosity finally ends here. Onslaught later resurfaced in the one-shot solo series titled X-Men Onslaught Revelation. Written by Cy Spurrier, the story is a follow-up from the time when Nightcrawler was tasked to create a new religion to help unite the mutants. However, he soon realized that everyone was dying and resurrecting themselves as if it was a joke. Later, with the help of Legion, Nightcrawler learned all this while Onslaught had managed to invade the mines of Krakoa, following which he was using the resurrection process to increase his might. The plot begins with Pixie being teleported into Legion's mind by Nightcrawler. The plan was to let Pixie use her soul dagger to free the people from Onslaught's control. Pixie freed several people and even Magneto, following which Pixie and Magneto led the mutants into Legion's mind. Meanwhile, Onslaught took possession of Charles Xavier's body, following which it was revealed that Onslaught Onslaught would be arriving through Marinette, aka Lost. Once this was revealed, Nightcrawler was able to defeat Onslaught. What makes Onslaught so powerful? Onslaught was created from the personalities of Magneto and Charles Xavier and hence shared their powers. However, he later imbibed the powers of the two Omega-level mutants, Nate Gray and Franklin Richards. Onslaught, to the full extent of powers, can lead to global annihilation. He had used Franklin's abilities to create a second sun and tried bombarding it on Earth. Onslaught had full access to the enormous psychic resources of the astral plane, which he could materialize in the real world if needed and could travel to and fro from. 
He could read the minds of his targets, control them from far-off distances via telepathy, and implant realistic telepathic illusions into them. Onslaught could create amnesia in his targets and make them forget whatever events he wishes. His mental shield could not be broken even by Omega-level telepaths. Onslaught was also capable of controlling objects via telekinesis and isolating and uniting particles at the molecular level. His telekinesis could also be used to create protective shields that could deflect powerful blasts like a nuclear warhead. Occasionally, Onslaught created destructive psionic spikes that could destroy physical objects coming in contact with it. Deriving from Magneto's consciousness, Onslaught possessed magnetokinesis and could create magnetic force fields as well. Besides all the psychic abilities, Onslaught possessed superhuman strength and was physically equal to Hulk. He could absorb mutants as he did with Franklin Richards and Nate Gray. After gaining powers from them, Onslaught could even bend reality at his will. Needless to say that apart from his power he was a genius tactician. Throughout the event, he chose his targets specially and nearly succeeded in annihilating entire reality. Onslaught Appearance and Other Media Onslaught was a boss character in the Marvel vs. Capcom. Voiced by Maurice Dean Wint, Onslaught appeared as the final boss and had two forms the normal-sized version and the second one being a floating giant. After being defeated, he revealed himself to be Charles Xavier. Onslaught was also present as a villain in Marvel Super Hero Squad Online and was voiced by Travis Willingham. In the Match 3 RPG game Marvel Puzzle Quest, Onslaught was present as a recruitable, unlockable, and playable character. He also appeared in Marvel Snap. Red Onslaught was present as a raid boss in MMO Marvel Heroes. Marvelous Verdict So we have finally come to the end of our video, and we hope you have found our content entertaining and informative. Onslaught was undoubtedly one of the biggest threats in the Marvel Universe, which could annihilate reality. One could hardly believe that such a monstrous villain could originate from the benevolent mutant Professor X. Although not much is romanticized about the Professor's tragedies, the man has gone through enormous tragedies, but has consistently demonstrated immense faith in his team and long-lasting patience in his belief that someday mutants and humans would be living in harmony. When such a consciousness was contaminated with Magneto's frustration and pessimism, the most dangerous villain, Onslaught, was born. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.